right. So for decades now, the story of our universe has rested on this one pretty staggering idea that about 85% of all the stuff out there is a mysterious, invisible substance that we call dark matter. It's the cosmic glue holding galaxies together, the scaffolding that the entire universe is built on. All of our best theories and models of how the universe evolved are based on this fundamental concept. But what if that picture isn't quite right? What if the most powerful telescope ever built, the James Webb Space Telescope, is sending back data that's starting to poke some serious holes in this story? The images JWST is delivering are so new, and in some cases so unexpected, that they're forcing scientists to go back and check their assumptions about how the cosmos works. We could be on the cusp of a really exciting shift in our understanding, one that might force us to rethink some of the fundamental pages in our cosmic textbook. The story of dark matter is being challenged, and what happens next could be fascinating. So in this video, we're going to cover first a quick recap on why we think dark matter is even a thing. Second, we'll look at what JWST has been seeing that's causing all this fuss. And finally, we'll dive into the caveats and what this all means. Are we about to throw out the idea of dark matter entirely? So to really get why the new JWST data is so interesting, we first need to understand just how central dark matter is to cosmology. It wasn't an idea that scientists just made up for fun. It was a necessary fix for some really big puzzles. The idea has been around since the 1930s, but it really got going in the 1970s with the work of astronomer Vera Rubin. She was looking at how spiral galaxies spin, and she expected to see stars on the outer edges moving much slower than stars near the center. You know, just like how in our solar system, Neptune orbits the sun way slower than Mercury does. But that's not what she found. Instead, the stars on the very outskirts of the galaxies were moving just as fast as the ones closer in. This was a huge problem for our understanding of gravity. The only way to explain it was if there was a massive invisible halo of extra stuff surrounding the entire galaxy, giving it an extra gravitational kick. The visible matter we could see, the stars and gas, just wasn't enough to hold these super-fast spinning galaxies together. Without this extra mass, they should have flown apart ages ago. And this unseen stuff was given the name dark matter. And that wasn't the only piece of evidence. Astronomers also saw that light from very distant galaxies was being bent and magnified as it passed by massive galaxy clusters. This effect, called gravitational lensing, could only be explained if those clusters had way more mass than we could see. The amount of bending was so extreme, it pointed to huge reservoirs of this dark matter. Putting all this together, scientists developed what is now our standard model of the universe, the Lambda Cold Dark Matter Model, or Lambda CDM for short. The Lambda bit refers to dark energy, which is driving the universe's expansion, and the cold dark matter part describes this invisible stuff. Cold here doesn't mean temperature-wise, but that the particles are slow-moving and heavy. And crucially, in this model, it doesn't interact with light or normal matter at all, except through gravity. For almost 50 years, Lambda CDM has been our best working model. It's been really successful at predicting the large-scale structure of the universe, this huge cosmic web of galaxies. It explains the afterglow of the Big Bang, the cosmic microwave background. The idea is that tiny seeds of dark matter in the early universe acted as gravitational scaffolds, pulling in normal matter to form the first small, dwarf galaxies, which then merged over billions of years to create the big galaxies we see today. It's a really elegant theory, but it all rests on a substance that no one has ever been able to directly detect. And that's where JWST comes in. The James Webb Space Telescope is just an incredible piece of engineering. Its huge golden mirror can see in the infrared, 
which lets it look deeper into space and further back in time than anything before it. And one of the first things scientists wanted to look at was a place that's become the ultimate test for dark matter, a colossal cosmic crash site called the Bullet Cluster. The Bullet Cluster is about 3.8 billion light years away, and it's actually two massive galaxy clusters that have collided and are passing right through each other. It's a perfect natural laboratory. As these two clusters smash together, their huge clouds of hot gas, which is most of the normal visible matter, crashed into each other and slowed down, creating a shockwave that looks a bit like a bullet. For decades, Mond was mostly on the fringes. It was good at explaining galaxies, but it really struggled to explain things on the scale of galaxy clusters and the cosmic microwave background. However, this is where it gets really interesting, because over 25 years ago, Mond proponents made a prediction. If their theory was right, the first galaxies would have formed very quickly into large, bright structures. Now, with JWST finding exactly these kinds of impossible early galaxies, Mond is getting a second look. The scientific method is all about making predictions and seeing what the data says, and in this one case, Mond's prediction looks surprisingly good. But, and it's a big but, the situation is far from settled. While Mondi might have an easier time with the early galaxies, the bullet cluster is still a huge hurdle for it. That clear separation between the mass and the hot gas is very difficult to explain with just modified gravity and is seen as strong evidence for a real substance. So we're in this fascinating place where one theory seems to work well for galaxies and the other for clusters, but neither seems to explain everything perfectly. At the same time, JWST is giving us clever new ways to probe dark matter. One of the most exciting is using intracluster light. This is the very faint, scattered glow from billions of stars that have been ripped out of their home galaxies during collisions. These orphan stars are now essentially tracing the overall dark matter halo of the cluster. JWST is so sensitive, it can map this faint light, giving us an independent way to see the invisible scaffolding. Even more cleverly, scientists are using the telescope itself to search for dark matter particles. Some theories suggest dark matter could be made of exotic particles like dark photons. If these exist, they might interact with JWST's sensitive detectors and create a tiny, anomalous signal. By searching through calibration data and blank sky images, researchers are using the telescope to do a kind of particle physics experiment, placing new limits on what dark matter could be. We are living through such an exciting time for cosmology. The James Webb Space Telescope isn't just confirming what we thought we knew. It's pushing us into new territory and forcing us to confront the messy, beautiful reality of how science works. This isn't a sign that cosmology is broken. It's the opposite. It's a sign that it's working exactly as it should. Established theories are being tested with more precise evidence than ever before. These impossible galaxies and the lumpy structures in the bullet cluster aren't problems to be ignored. They're clues. They might point us toward a more complete picture of dark matter, or maybe they're the first hints of a completely new theory of gravity. The story of dark matter is far from over. In fact, it feels like we're just starting a thrilling new chapter. Future telescopes, like the Nancy Grace Roman Space Telescope, will build on what Webb has started. The next few years of data could resolve these tensions, or they could make the mystery even deeper. So, what do you think is happening here? Are we just refining our standard model of dark matter, or are we on the verge of a paradigm shift that gets rid of it completely? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. And if you want to stay on the front lines of cosmic discovery and see how this incredible story unfolds, make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell. You really won't want to miss what comes next.